Okay guys, so yesterday I changed my fuel filters and I purged the air out of it using this power probe, which I'm going to talk about now because I've had a lot of questions about it. So, but let me, let me talk a little bit about this power probe because I've had some questions on it. So this is it right here. When I bought it, I think I got it on this 12 and 24 volt. I think when I got it, it was like, uh, oh God, it was like 30 something bucks because it was maybe five years ago. And uh, now they're probably a hundred bucks, who knows. But it's just a, uh, a, a little gadget that you can apply 12 or 24 volts. It's called a Power Probe 3. And uh, I'll show you what I know about it and how I use it. It's got, you can use it as an ohm meter. You can also use it to uh, check continuity and you can also apply voltage to uh, certain things with it. It comes with a very long cord as you can see here, which is good for troubleshooting like your uh, trailers, brake trailers, uh, or rather uh, boat trailers or, or just any kind of trailer where you want to check your lights and that sort of thing. Somebody was asking about ground. Yes, you do have a ground here, and I'll go ahead and hook it up right now. And you've got the ground, and you've also got the positive right here. You can see it comes on, and uh, if you press this forward, well, you'll get your... Uh, shows 12.6 volts, which is what's on the truck right now. And, um, you know, it's got different various modes, which I'm not going to really get into uh, too extensively because we just don't have the time. Now, they've got this little pigtail here, and that's a negative, and that's what you use to check continuity. So if you wanted to check continuity between, you know, say like this piece of steel over here uh, on your intake and uh, on the EGR valve here, and uh, see if you got continuity with uh, something else on the truck. You can see I do. I'm getting the, I don't know, can you see the green light? But yes, so you know, that's just checking continuity, that sort of thing. But what I use it for is to put it in that Fuse 70 and run that pump. And uh, that, that's about the size of it, nothing fancy. You can cycle the sound on and off and that sort of thing. And um, depending on uh, you know, how you, uh, you want to use it. But the, the main thing I use it for is to apply voltage. I got it pretty much specifically so that if I got into a situation where I had water in my tank, I keep this under the, under the back seat and I'm all set and ready to go if I needed to do that. And it, you, know, you just pull up to the filling station and you're thinking, okay, I'm, you're not thinking about what vehicle you're in and you grab some gas and start filling it up. That happens to people all the time. And it can happen to any of us. Uh, fortunately, the nozzles on the big diesel trucks, on the big diesel pumps, won't let you stick it into a uh, gas outlet. I did try to do that one time on my Volkswagen, not thinking so, but it, it just wouldn't do it. So that's good, it's a good thing. But you can go the other way because the gasoline nozzles are small and you can accidentally get that thing into a uh, into a diesel inlet. So anyway, um, now let me show you something. So that, that's all I'm going to talk about there on this power probe. Because basically that's about all I know about it. But there's a manual on it and there's a few other things you can do with it. Now let me, uh, let me explain to you what I actually did wrong yesterday. Well, I, I mentioned it. But um, the thing that you don't want to do once you've changed your fuel filters, whether or not you, you purge it like I did through the fuse box or uh, cycle the pump from the inside, the thing that you don't want to do is put your foot on the brake because then the starter is going to engage and it's going to take off and start cranking and there's not much you can do to stop it that I know of from the inside of the vehicle. And as the comment uh, that I got last night mentioned, that's hard on your injection pump and that's hard on, uh, it's, it's hard on your batteries, it's hard on, you know, your starter, all of that stuff, depending on how long it cranks. So uh, those, are, those are valuable comments and I appreciate it. Uh, now let me show you what I would do personally. So if you look at this fuse box, you'll see this K7 right here. That's your starter relay. So what I would do, 
And here's the K7 right here. So what I would do if, is if that thing went to running away on me, I'd pull that starter relay right here. And that's the K7, it's a big relay. And you pull that and that should kill your, your starter. So the way I recommend is just get inside the truck after you've purged it, regardless of which method you use, and then cycle this thing on, but don't put your foot on the brake. And then once the pump pressure's up, then you can go ahead and attempt to start. And that'll prevent that uncomfortable situation of having that starter just run away. I think it's a, I think it's a design problem with the... Uh, with the electrical system, it's once you let you take your finger off this button, this truck should stop cranking, and uh, it's not doing that. And I've heard of this problem over and over and over, and it's uh, it's not doing your equipment any good when that happens. I appreciate you guys watching my video, and until next time, adios.